Hello and welcome to another Burp B-Check tutorial. In this tutorial, we're going to look at what is probably going to be the most used B-Check feature, which is adding custom payloads to insertion points when Burp's scanner runs. There are many things that you can do with this and I'm excited to explore them, but in this video, we're just gonna look at a very simple example where we run through the logic of Port Swigger's template for insertion points uh, payloads and then we also make a very simple one to test for SQL injection in Juice Shop. So let's get started. I'm going to click a new B check and I'm going to navigate to the insertion point level template and click create using this template. So let's look through the logic of it. We'll skip the metadata, which just defines uh, metadata about this B check. The define section here is creating a couple of parameters. And if you're an experienced app tester, you probably have a good idea of what this is intending to check. It looks like some type of template injection payload. And the idea here is if we inject this payload into an application and it processes it and it returns it, then we should see the product of these two numbers, which is what the answer variable here is defining. So the way that this works is given an insertion point then, and they included in part of the logic for the B check, a, an initial check to avoid false positives where this number might just organically occur in a response in the application already. So they only send the payload if this number isn't in the original response, right? So there is an, there is an original response prior to sending any payloads. This B check looks at that response and asks the question, is this number in it? Uh, because if it is, then you're going to get a false positive. And there's probably a better way to do this. Like probably if this number does organically occur in response, probably what you should do is use a different payload such that you're still getting the full scan coverage instead of skipping some items that might be vulnerable. But nevertheless, uh, it's a good way to avoid false positives at least. So I'm not going to improve upon this logic uh, in this video tutorial. But uh, anyways, they're checking, does that exist in the base response? Then uh, if it does not, they will send the payload uh, and it's going to append to the payload position that it's defined in. And of course that payload is going to be the calculation. So this is what ultimately is impended to each insertion point to send in a request to the target. And then we have our analysis of the response to determine whether this is uh, an actual vulnerability. So if the answer, so if this number here is in the latest response, then we clearly have caused the application to perform this calculation. And so it's very likely vulnerable to some type of injection vulnerability, uh, quite likely server-side template injection, but it could be something else. So in this case, if the answer is in the latest response, then we report the issue as high with a confidence uh, tentative detail, the application transforms input in a way that suggests it might be vulnerable to some kind of server side code injection, remediation, manual investigation is advised. Great. So we understand the general structure of adding custom payloads to scan checks. And now we're going to just modify this to make our own. So OWASP Juice Shop, and actually I'm just going to save and close this as is. OWASP Juice Shop has a very simple SQL injection vulnerability. And I'm just going to trigger that one now. So here we have a login request, which I'm going to send to repeater. And if I send that, we're going to get invalid email or password. But if I add a single quote to the email field, like so, and then I send that request again, we get a SQL error, right? Because that uh, SQL quote has been included in a string that has been dropped right in to uh, another string that is being used for a SQL query. And uh, as a result, the single quote has modified the syntax of that SQL query because uh, it's being done you know, very insecurely. Uh, so it's broken the logic, it's caused a syntax error and we've identified a SQL injection point. And now we want to try to implement this with a B check as opposed to doing it manually as I've just done here, because anything that we can automate is going to allow us to cover more surface area than um, we would manually. And of course, this isn't a great example because 
Burp will likely already catch this with its default payloads that Scanner uses, but it's a nice simple example to look at how to implement a B check. So I'm going back to extensions and B checks, and I'm clicking on my insertion point level uh, B check, and then I'm going to click edit. So here, um, I'll keep the name the same for now, and under the description, I will just change the description to checks for SQL I, change author to myself, and under define, under answer, I'm just going to hard code SQL, and under calculation, which I'm going to change to payload, I'm going to change this to just a single quote, just like that. Um, I'm going to remove the comments here uh, just to declutter this a little bit. Um, you don't need the, the comments in this case because I'm explaining it. So uh, given an insertion point, then if not answer in base.response, then send payload. Now, um, I like keeping this logic because um, if SQL is in the response, um, it's going to create a false positive for us You know, prior to actually sending a payload. Um, again, keep in mind that we would be excluding potential surface area in this case. Um, so uh, perhaps as a, um, as, a, as a challenge to learn more about implementing B checks, you might want to implement better logic such that we are accounting for false positives while still providing full coverage of our surface area. But I'm not going to do that in this tutorial. So apologies. Good luck if you do decide to do it. So in this case, we send the payload, and you'll recall I changed the name of payload from calculation to payload, so we need to change it there. It's going to be just uh, appended to the payload positions. And then uh, if answer, so if SQL appears in the latest response, then report the issue. I'm going to leave the severity and the confidence. Um, and you know what? I'm going to keep the detail the same too because uh, it is a type of server-side code injection. And sure, remediation makes sense as well. Uh, they've kept it nice and generalized for us, so we don't have to modify much. Uh, that should be it for a B check. I'm going to save and close that. And now what I'm going to do is go to my proxy history and find that login request. And I'm going to right click in this simple request here. And I'm going to click scan, open scan launcher. And I'm only going to enable B checks by selecting a custom scan configuration that has been set up to run B checks only. Uh, if you've watched my other videos, you should be familiar with this by now. So I click OK. That's going to scan. And look at that. It has lit up the target tab. So I go to target sitemap issues. And I see it has identified um, potentially a SQL injection vulnerability. So if I click on the request, you'll see that our single quote that we've defined as our payload has been inserted, appended to the end of this um, uh, value here within the JSON object. And if I click on response, you'll see that it has flagged three times the presence of the string SQL. Um, and this is going to generate probably some uh, false positives. Uh, it's probably going to miss many <laughs> types of SQL injection. Uh, but it's a very simple way to get started with a B check. Keep in mind, of course, that when you're inserting your custom payloads into insertion points, you're depending upon the insertion points that are identified by Burp Scanner. So one thing that you may want to do instead of how I triggered a scan is right click on a request and send it to Intruder. And here you can define your own insertion points. So maybe we want, for example, I don't know, the origin header value to be tested. So I can define uh, this insertion point right here using the uh, Intruder formatting. And if I right click in that request now, I can click on scan to find insertion points, open scan launcher, and run scan just as I did before. The difference being that we're not relying on burp to determine where it should be injecting our payloads. We have defined those uh, ourselves. So that's how you implement a very simple B check to inject your own payloads into injection or insertion points within burp scanner. I think, as I mentioned, this will probably be one of the more useful ways to implement custom checks with B-checks. I'm very excited personally to explore uh, the many ways that I can further uh, automate and, and make more efficient my testing. And uh, I hope that um, everyone who's watching this as well is, is um, motivated by this to go and, and find and create some interesting B-checks. Uh, actually, if you're watching this shortly after it comes out, uh, Portswigger actually just announced a challenge for creating B-checks, so I encourage you to go check that out, create some interesting checks, publish those, 
I think this is a great opportunity for the community to collaborate with uh, a tool that is very popular among testers to create uh, a large set of useful scans that can make all of our testing more effective and more efficient. Good luck.